we're going to take a look in this video at suspensions. Often when you read about suspensions, you're told that there are various types, some of which work better than others. This can be a little confusing because it's not immediately apparent where these options come from in terms of the total pool of possible suspensions we could have. So let's start by looking at all the different types of suspensions that would in theory be possible and from there we'll eliminate the ones that don't work until we're just left with the most useful ones. So first of all, briefly, what is a suspension? Well, when you have two four-part chords next to one another and one of the parts from the first chord is carried over or suspended into the second chord, this is a suspension. So let's start by listing all the possible suspensions we could actually have. So we know a suspension occurs when a note resolves down by a step. So let's write down all the possibilities. Now we said a suspension occurs when a note resolves down by a step. So immediately we can remove from this list all the examples that end on a dissonant interval. Because of course if they're ending on a dissonant interval then they're not resolving. A seventh is a dissonant interval so we can take out this one. A fourth in relation to the bass is dissonant, so we'll take out this one. Remember that all these intervals refer to the distance between the bass voice and the suspending voice. Two is dissonant, so we'll take that out. That leaves us with five possibilities. However, although a unison technically isn't dissonant, an important point regarding suspensions is that the note that's suspended shouldn't already occur in the resolving chord. So we're going to remove this one as well. Of course, you may have noticed that we included 9-8, and there, of course, the note that's suspended, namely the 8, is already included in the chord, since the 8 is an octave above the bass voice. But this is the one exception to that rule. There's one more point to consider, though, which is that non-harmonic tones are always dissonant. If we look at this example here, however, neither 6 nor 5 are dissonant intervals. So the actual non-harmonic tone, namely the suspension itself, is this first note in each of these examples. However, 6 is not a dissonant interval. As such, we don't have the pattern of movement from dissonance to consonance that's required in the case of a suspension. So we'll take out this one as well. So that leaves us with just three possibilities. Let's take a look at each of these in turn. So let's start by looking at the 9-8 suspension. So we're in E major or C sharp minor here. I'm going to go with C sharp minor. Let's start off then with a simple tonic subdominant progression. put in our Roman numeral figuration. So there's our basic progression. Now it's time to put in the suspension. We said we're going to use a 9-8 suspension. In other words, from the bass note of the subdominant chord, which is also its root note since it's in root position, we need a suspension that's going to consist of an interval of the ninth resolving to an octave. In other words, 9 to 8. We can figure out, of course, that a ninth above F sharp is going to be G sharp. So the next step is to look at the preceding chord, the tonic chord here, and find our G sharp, which is then going to be the note that's suspended across into the subdominant chord. Well, here we have the G sharp and the soprano. So we're going to tie this G sharp across. And then the arrival on the F is going to be deferred by one crotchet beat. So this is going to be a G sharp crotchet resolving to an F sharp. And that is our 9-8 suspension. So we can write in above here, 9, 8. Let's see how it sounds. So the suspension adds a bit of extra pathos to the original unembellished tonic subdominant progression. This example then makes it clear that there are three parts to a suspension. There's the chord of preparation, the suspension itself, and then the resolution. So this is the case with any suspension. Although some suspensions may be embellished in various ways before the point of resolution, such as, for instance, the basic pattern of preparation, suspension, resolution still applies. Let's look at another example, this time in a major key. So we'll use our same key signature and work in E major. This time we'll make our progression tonic to supertonic. So again, we're working with a 9-8 suspension. Our bass note is again an F-sharp. So a ninth above F-sharp is G-sharp. You can see that our G-sharp is once more in the soprano, so we're going to be suspending the soprano voice across from the tonic chord into the supertonic chord. So we create our tie, and again we defer the resolution of the G-sharp to the F-sharp by one crotchet. Let's hear the results. 
again, a 9-8 suspension. Of course, the suspension doesn't always have to be in the soprano voice. We could just as easily, for instance, switch around the soprano and alto voices, and the effect would still be fine. Again, if we wanted to, we could embellish the suspension figure. The options for embellishment are fairly extensive, we won't go into those right now, but they're largely based on your typical non-harmonic note patterns. Here, for instance, we have a neighbor note figure. Let's hear this with the embellishment. Next, let's have a look at a 7-6 suspension. We'll go back into C-sharp minor for this one. So here our progression is tonic of C-sharp minor to leading tone diminished first inversion of C-sharp minor. Let's write in our Roman numerals. Now we said this was going to be a 7-6 suspension. What that means then is that the suspended note must be a 7th above our bass note of the second chord. A 7th above D-sharp in the key of C-sharp minor is C-sharp. We have two C-sharps in this chord. Clearly the bass C-sharp would be impractical in this situation, so the alto C-sharp seems a better choice, especially as the suspension calls for a resolution to 6, and our interval of the 6th is found between the D-sharp and the B-sharp. So we're going to tie across the C-sharp. The resolution to the B-sharp is going to be deferred again by a crutchet beat. Let's hear how that sounds. Quite successful. There then is our example of a 7-6 suspension. Interestingly, this example provides the opportunity for a double suspension. In other words, having two voices suspended simultaneously. You'll notice the interval between the bass and the soprano is an octave. D-sharp to D-sharp. And that in the preceding chord, we have an E in the soprano line. The interval from the bass D-sharp to the soprano E is a ninth, which means we could create a 9-8 suspension at the same time that our 7-6 suspension is taking place. So we tie across the E and defer the resolution of the E to D-sharp. Let's hear how that sounds. Again, quite successful. So there's an example of a double suspension. Finally, let's take a look at the 4-3 suspension. We'll stay in C-sharp minor for this one. So here we have a tonic to dominant progression. We'll write in our figuration. We're going to build a 4-3 suspension. So let's start by finding the interval of a third, or in this case a compound third, above the bass voice. So there's our bass. The third above it, in the context of C-sharp minor, is going to be a B-sharp. So clearly this is the voice that we're going to be suspending. In the soprano of this chord we find our C-sharp, which is a compound perfect fourth above G-sharp in the bass. So clearly our suspension here is going to be in the soprano again. So we'll tie across our C-sharp and resolve it on the second crutchet of the dominant chord to the third of that chord. Let's hear this. So that is our 4-3 suspension. This is a pattern that's commonly heard in cadences. So after our dominant chord we would resolve back to the tonic. Let's hear that. Again, if we wanted to, we could embellish this. So we've now covered an introduction to suspensions. In a later video, we'll take the concept of suspensions a bit further. We can look at chains of suspensions, suspensions in the bass voice, and retardations.